I wouldn't rush it. I would really try and go for the job. And as soon as I got the job, literally the day I got the job, that's when I'd start thinking about freelance. Funny how that is. As soon as I got a, a job, what I would then do is look for my first freelance client because then I would have nothing to lose. Be careful. Some jobs want you not to have clients. Don't tell them you might get clients. That's a no-no, okay? Nothing can stop you unless they have a very strict clause about it, but be careful and probably separate the kind of world you're in there. So if you're doing work for Oracle or Salesforce or Canva or Photo Adobe and you're in their department, maybe you do mindfulness in your clients or whatever that niche is you're referring to. Be careful. A lot of people like things like mindfulness, spirituality, yoga, vegan. Like I was into all these as well early on and I'll tell you why. It's because they seem like softer people who run these businesses and somehow we're gonna have an easier time speaking with them and they're gonna understand us better and that is true. But the flip side of that coin is that these businesses cannot afford our services. Unfortunately, I believe a lot of these businesses are gonna have to become very lean to survive. Their margins aren't as good well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And they're going to have to sort of do a lot on their own. That's not everyone, but that's a tricky thing about those niches. When you think about where people spend a lot of money, you have to see that you're taking a piece of that as the marketer in that world. Here's what I would do if I was you. I'd immediately start a blog on AI and mindfulness. Every day for the next 30 days, I'd write a 500 to 1,000 word post using AI, about AI and mindfulness. Every week I'd write one piece that's longer form that I write by myself, that I reflect upon everything I'm learning so people can see it both in action and how I feel about it. Because a lot of people may use AI, but they may not like it. They just have no choice now. And then I would search for a job, the one that makes the most sense for you. And then you would use that project as an example. If you were in an interview and say, yeah, I've been working on my own site been blogging every day. I'm very committed to doing, using my entire time to be a focused digital marketer. I learned from Rich UX. I read books. We're going to hire you. And then you have the freedom to have an income and say, okay, let me sell someone at a good price. Because once you have an income, you don't have to under quote yourself. Because what happens in the freelance world, everyone's under quoting themselves because they refuse to sell enough people. They refuse to send their offer to enough people. They refuse to reach out. They refuse to post content. They're lazy. Everyone's lazy. Everyone's tired. Everyone's worn out. I'm, I'm right there with you. That's why I talked about not being average and sacrifice. Okay, it's not, it's not about making life perfectly easy. It's about what do you want out of all this? And can we find a pathway? And shouldn't we be honest that digital marketing truly is the unlock in the modern world? Look, you can go into tech sales or IT and probably make more money in a job, but you might not enjoy it first and foremost. Second, those two jobs do not lead you really into starting your own business. You're gonna have to learn marketing alongside of that. Whereas if you're a great marketer, you can have many successful businesses without have ever studied sales, coding, IT. There's an, a great exit towards all this. That's why the long term is useful for marketing. You're only going to get better. You're only going to have more experience. I like marketing simply because it's going to unlock many elements in your life. It's the only thing you need to learn if you want to do drop shipping. It's the only thing you need to learn if you want to do affiliate sales. It's the only thing you need to learn if you want to start writing online and be paid for that with a subscription model. You don't learn outside of digital marketing. And that's why it's funny. I teach digital marketing, but I'm really teaching people how to run an effective online business. It's up to you to decide what that business is going to be. And I hope you've heard of me speak about the Ikigai. It's critical to use a framework to choose your life path. Otherwise it falls flat at some point down the line. You cannot just do it for money. You cannot just do it for the title. You cannot just do things that just help people. You cannot just do things that you like. There has to be a mix. Hey Rich, I'm a digital marketer in a large corporation. I wanna make it as a freelancer and build a business, but I'm feeling stuck because of school. How do you get a second wind to drive towards it? Please let me be really frank with you and don't take it personally at all. Sounds like you're in a great spot, you just don't see it yet. But the truth is when you're in school, you have no real sense of the real world yet. I highly doubt that you've spent much time working, maybe a couple years, maybe you got some part-time jobs. Great. But the fact is you never had to do those jobs to feed yourself. I think that people ultimately reach a tipping point where they want to have their own life and freedom and they realize, look, it's going to take a certain amount of funds to do that. What do I have to do to do that? What do I have to do to get there? Second wind, I'm not sure if you're referring to late in the night or you're referring to a new motivation, but 
just recognize there's return on investment, ROI, but there's also COI, cost of inaction. If you don't do it, what are the consequences? One of the funny things about how the internet works and how Instagram works and how people are learning is everyone talks about ROI. And the reason they do that is it's the easiest way to link people with an investment that makes sense. If I invest 1,000 and I'm gonna get 5,000, really no brainer. I think I made my point about how to navigate that. now. If you're in school, and here's what really is gonna work tremendously for you. It's get up and do this first and then go to school. Get up at five o'clock, the winner's hour, work for two hours every day before you go. You'll not only be more focused and be happier when you're at school because you've already done something incredible, you've been productive, whereas 90% of people are not. I know it sounds crazy, I know it sounds tough. I did it today, I was tired when I got up. You know how much I wanted to go back to bed? It was 5.45, I was like, gotta go. Got to do this, got to work, got to feed my family. Once you have a deep responsibility on your back, it's not hard to be motivated. You're in the hard part right now. It's tough. School's tough. It slows us down. It's not the best thing in the modern world. But take what you can from it. If you're already in it, take what you can from it. What can you do? It is life. Things change, things shift. We have to be thinking and strategic and we can't just live blindly, not adjust as we see new things come into our environments or world. Do you read any books, magazines, blogs to learn more? I find Twitter is plenty. I'll grab a new book if people are talking about it. I certainly don't read magazines. I don't think you're gonna find that. Blogs, definitely. Definitely there's some great blogs out there. But you know, we're just in the world where so many people figured out how to make videos. We're typically watching videos. Remember when I said the thing about learning and earning? Be careful that you're not constantly learning and watching videos when you could be going out and making money. I don't know what tech sales people are following up on. It's not like there's a lot of new tech trends and information. The way we sell really hasn't changed too much. If you have a job and you wanna make a personal brand, should you make it under an alias if your job approves? First of all, I have to give you the advice of be cautious. I now know multiple people who've been fired for posting content as an employee. It's so sad. And it's one of the biggest reasons I wanna do what I do is to help people live their purpose. Maybe that is having a personal brand. Hey, it's your personal brand, right? It's up to you if it's an alias. I hope people know that Rich UX is an alias, but I love this alias and it's very close to my real name anyways, but it's totally okay to make an alias if you love it. But we don't wanna be switching that a lot because it's our personal brand. But then again, sometimes we just have to start again. How do you remain relevant? It's a tough question and it's a bit disturbing the answer, I think. And I think we have to be careful that we don't overvalue relevancy because who are we relevant to? Are you talking about being relevant to the whole world? Do you need to be relevant to the whole world? Perhaps instead of trying to be relevant, you can simply try to leave a legacy. Instead of trying to be known and popular today, perhaps you can think about your death and leaving behind the greatest work that you were able to achieve and maybe that will make you relevant forever. I'd hate to be relevant for one month and then be gone. I think that'd be very depressing. So be careful about worrying about that. But to answer your question, it's to keep up on what cool kids do. Marketing is a lot of times about what cool people like. Marketing finds its edge in early adoption and being just a little bit different. That's why we call it the unique selling proposition because we need to be just slightly different if we're gonna be successful in anything. It's very hard to be a replica of something and be successful. How do you remain relevant as a digital marketer in this era of AI? You see, when there was only the newspaper, one of the earlier mediums, let's look at this from the perspective of mediums. The common mediums are text, audio, images, and video, the four common media, right? Mediums. What you want to see is every medium that came after the last medium reflected a lot on the previous medium. So the newspaper came out to share news, whatever that is. When the radio came, the radio reflected upon what was said on the newspapers a lot of the time. And when the TV came, 
it reflected a lot about the movies. A lot of TV shows like to talk about movies and things like movie review because we as a society are trying to understand our own reality today. Therefore, we have to understand the media we're receiving and perceiving as important to us. So when the internet came, what happened is we reflected a lot about the TV. All these websites popped up about what's the best TV show? What's the music from this show? What's the lyrics from this song? What's the top movie, Rotten Tomatoes? This kind of stuff. With every progressive medium, and I believe AI is almost a medium, it's to use that medium to reflect on the previous medium. And so AI will allow us to reflect on the internet because we can use AI to quickly understand the internet far more than what we had with Google search. Google search was great, but it has a specific usage with a clear intention of taking a specific action of learning or purchasing something. AI is going to do a lot of different things for a lot of different people. And we're not just going to reflect on the internet. What we're really going to reflect on is data because internet created data points as well as a lot of media. So how do you stay relevant as a digital marketer? You play in AI and you help people understand the internet data and hopefully AI, but you know, we won't understand AI until one day later when we can reflect back and understand what it was. And that's why people are calling for a stoppage in AI because we're afraid that we haven't actually looked at the end of the road. What is the real result of all this? And that's why you're in the hardest year of the last decade to get a job because there's such unclarity. That's why you may want to take things into your own hands. That's why you may not want to rely on corporations to feed you. You may need to have two things going. I think it's fair for me in a recession to say you should have a job and a side hustle and not be complaining about it. You should be thrilled that you have that luxury and opportunity. When your grandparents finished the war, some of them were really stuck. You know, not everyone could just pick it up again. So we have to see it as a luxury. It's hard, but that's what I meant about the mindset, about coming to work with the right mindset, about seeking a job with the right mindset. If you're quite young, you might not have been exposed to some of these ideas. Like, do you realize you're not your thoughts? Like most people don't know that yet. Most people pay thousands of dollars for someone to tell them you're not your thoughts. Your thoughts are a byproduct of chemicals floating through your body and brain that trigger perception, understandings, memories, and sometimes they're not controllable. They are not you. And so that's just the first thing that you might want to tell someone. It's like, hey, whatever you're thinking, you can change it. And so you can change your life. Because this whole time, you've been thinking that you're not good enough. You thought because you thought you're not good enough that you're not. And this is what I mean is like, I can teach you the course, but maybe it's not the course. And so you look, hey, when's this course going to get me a job? It's like being a professional in the modern world, being a survivor on the internet, being someone who's willing to take on what is happening today, what we're faced with, the cost of living, etc. It takes strength, courage, determination, commitment. Please seek answers around these ideas and you will see tremendous transformation in your life. The mind really carries a lot of the key unlocks. Okay, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up so you get more of it in your feed from Rich and Nisha. And I hope you're subscribing to the channel by now. Leave me a comment below if you've got questions, but if you wanna watch the full live stream where that clip just came from, it's up here. I linked it for you directly. No lazy uploads here. And for those of you who are just beginners who need something a little bit more foundational and just found me for the first time, I highly recommend this video here, one of our more popular videos to get you started. See you guys in the next video.